Welcome back everybody. So today we're going to focus on the scatter plot. There are many different things that we can do with a scatter plot. And today you're going to learn how all the things that you can do with a scatter plot. We're going to do this all in Python and we're going to use a library called Plotly, which is an up and coming and actually pretty um, commonly used uh, Python library to create a bunch of diff different data visualization graphs or charts or dashboards. Um, so if you want to install it, if you don't have it, just do pip install in this version, or you can install any other, other version you want. It should still work um, because I have 4.5. Okay, um, also uh, download this code below the video in the description below the video so you can, you can follow it and open the first or the second link will be this. It'll take you to the Plotly Express scatter um, library method where you can see all the parameters we're gonna go over. So all of these parameters we're actually going to review today so you understand each and every one of them and how they work. Uh, if you need to pause the video so you can take a look at it while we go and cover uh, each one of these parameters. All right, so you have Plotly installed. You're going to also import pandas and the rest of these libraries. And we're going to play around with the data set that is inside Python uh, Plotly Express data. It's tips. It's called tips. We're just going to change the, the table uh, size with this column name. We're going to call it table size. And this is what you're going to see. This is the data we're going to play around with. Take a look. OK, so you see that we're going to see uh, a column, total bill column that we're going to see. We're going to play around with uh, the tip uh, that each person gave. Uh, the sex of that person, uh, whether they're a smoker or not, the day, uh, the time, and the table size. Okay, let's minimize this again. All right. Okay, so to start, we'll go over this in, in towards the end. Um, to start, let's. this is all the code. But these are all the parameters. But we're not going to go or do all the parameters right now. So just hashtag out most of these parameters up until up until here up until symbol sequence hashtag this out as well it's control question mark if you're using Adam so they're just like comments and just leave these three open for now okay okay let's zoom back in all right so we have these three open let's see what these do let's upload the graph and see what it gives us because here I'm playing around with size and symbol. All right. So here we see that the symbol is going to be uh, using the um, column smoker. And it's either a yes or a no. So the no's are um, circles and the yeses are diamonds. Now we also, and this is because here we said symbol smoker column. So we also are playing around with the size. And we said that the size is going to, we're going to differentiate Si the markers by size and in this case we're going to differentiate the markers by the table size so we know that from the data if you looked at it their table size is anywhere from five all the way up to six so the smaller symbol the smaller markers you can see table size number one at the bottom and the bigger markers i said this big circle is probably a six somewhere in the middle is probably a four see a table size four so that's how you play around with the size and i put size max 13 meaning that if I had really big table sizes, it would never go over 13, oh, above 13. Because if you didn't have this column and it could go up to anything you want, you might have markers that are 100 or 150 and then it will, it will just be too big. So Plotly allows you to have this parameter to control the maximum size of the marker. Okay, so I'm going to uh, hashtag this out. And we're just going to look at the symbol. The symbol is smoker. And the next parameter is the symbol sequence. So this allows you to control the sequence of, of the symbol. So in this case, I want the symbol to be not a circle and diamond. I want it to be something else. What is three and square open? What does this even mean? This you take from the second or third um, link that I you have below the video in the description. Just open it up. Um, and here you have all the symbols. So each symbol, you can you can either give it a number 
or you give it a, a, a string, like uh, just a name. So in this case, zero equal is actually circle is the same thing. Let's see, I put three. So three actually means cross. So it's the same thing as saying cross. I'm going to put three. And I put square open. So I also put right, I'm also going to use this symbol. So since I did that, let's take a look. Now I'm supposed to have those symbols um, in the in the plot. The first one is going to be three, and the second and the first one is going to be um, a cross. It's a no, and the second one, yes, is going to be an open an open square. Now, if I I can also map it, I can also use symbol map. What does this mean? That if I wanted to have a little bit more control and decide instead of first, second, third, fourth, decide uh, which ones I want where. Then I could just say, I know that this, uh, the uh, column is going to be smoker. And I know there's two options. There's no, and there's a yes value in that column. So I can just say, under the no, I want it to be square open symbol. And under the yes, I want it to be a three symbol, which is uh, a cross. Now, here doesn't, doesn't necessarily, you don't need this, because there are only two symbols, so you might as well use this. However, if there's a lot of symbols, uh, like 10 of them in the legend, then it's probably better just to map it. It's just easier. It, these accomplish the, sa the same things, these two lines, but this is a lot easier because you don't have to remember the order of the symbols uh, to create the, the list. You can just map them out. Okay, so given that this is the same thing as this, I'm just going to uh, hash it out. And now we're going to go into, let's hash out smoker as well, and let's go into color and opacity. So we hashed out these two. Again, to hash out, if you're using Atom, it's control, question mark. All right, let's save this, open it, and let's see what color does. Color day is differentiates the markers by color. So day column, I think there's only four options, and we'll see. There's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And... Um, so each one by default got their, got their own color. We didn't choose the color. Uh, Plotly automatically gave them their color. Uh, each color is a different day. And the opacity we put here is 0.5 because I don't want it too dark. So you see that the markers are a bit, are a bit clear. Um, if we wanted, we wanted them to be a lot darker, a lot more bold, we will put 1 under opacity right here instead of 0 0.5. The options are anywhere from 0 to 1. Okay. So let's go to the next one. Discrete sequence. So here, just like this one, is very similar to symbol sequence. Here you can play around with the color. Instead of allowing Plotly to give the color by default, you can say, I want these colors to be the colors of the different values under the day column. So the first one is going to be red, then it's going to be green, and then blue, and then black. You can only do this in a discrete when the color column isn't numeric data, when the data is discrete, meaning that in this column day, the values are, are days, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. They are not numerical. Because they're not numerical, you can use this. If they were numerical, if the color was the size column, which was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then you would use continuous. You would use this. But I'm not going to use this because these are discrete values. So let us see what happens when I use discrete values. Now I don't know the order of the days. All I know is that the first one is going to be red and the second one is going to be green. So red is Sunday, green is Saturday, blue is Thursday because that's the order of my list right here. And that's how you got it. The opacity is back to default 1.0 so it's very bold. Okay, but let's say I want to control which day gets which color, I can either use this and just remember the, the order of them, or just like I did with symbols, I can control, I can map it. I can map the chosen color. So I can just say, whatever order the days come in, doesn't matter. Thursday is going to be green, Friday is going to be red, Saturday will be black, and Sunday will be brown. That's if I want to control it. Okay, so let's open this again. This is continuous color. So this, you're actually given it, uh, you're given the, the color values, the markers, you're given them, uh, you given them a different color scale. But again, this is only when color column is numeric data. This day is not numeric. It's values of strings, Thursday, Friday. So if you want numeric, we're going to have to put size, because size is from 1 to 6, the table size. And now I can put continuous scale. 
And this continuous scale that I'm using is army rows diverging. Open this link. There are three different um, scales that are built in. Let me actually make this bigger. There are three different yeah, color scales. There are sequential scales, and you can see the colors here. Uh, the types here, they would put plot, Leo, Ridge, so see um, There are divergent scales that we're going to use, where you can see you can use these, right? I'm using uh, army rows. Um, so divergent means there's one color in the middle that, that's evident that that's where the break is, and then it changes colors again from left to right. And then there is cyclical, which are more like these. And again, you can choose any one of these. So I'm choosing army rows under diverging. So to do that, you would just do px, uh, which is the plotly express dot colors diverging dot army rows. And that is what we should get. Remember that army rows was anywhere from green to pink. Where is it? Did it load? Yes. So you see anywhere from green to pink, and the middle is around 3.5. Um, so we got what we wanted. Now if I want to control where the middle is, you have continuous color midpoint. This is only when colors are diverging, only when I'm using the diverging method here can I use the midpoint. And this is just to say I don't want the midpoint right here to be 3.5. I want to control what it's going to be. So if I want it to be table size 2, I'll just put it as 2. And let's see what happens when I do that. Close some browser tabs here. Okay, so when I do that, I can see that the midpoint is 2, just like I wanted it to be, but minus 2, minus 1 are the green ones. I don't have minus 2, minus 1, so it doesn't matter, but that's because I chose the midpoint to be 2. So you can play around with it and choose any midpoint you want, or just leave it the way it is because Plotly will automatically try to calculate the midpoint. All right, so let's hashtag this out. We did color. I'm going to hashtag color size out as well. Now we're going to go to the next thing, which is table size. Actually, let's let's put table size and hover name. Save. Let's upload this and let's see what it gives us. So these are the next parameters, text and hover name. So here we chose the um, text to be table size. So you see over each, every marker, you have a number, two, two, four, six. It doesn't make a lot of sense here because there's so many markers. But if you have only three or four markers, and it's important for you, usually we do this on, on maps, on scatter map box, to see what marker that is, what location it is, um, is it a library or something else? And you would have text right outside. So you don't have to hover over it to see what it is. It would already be apparent by the text on the marker. The next one is hover. Hover name just means that you want the values to appear in bold in the hover tooltip. So this is the hover tooltip right here, this blue box. And dinner is the first one in bold because you chose the time column to be, to be bolded. Um, so in this case it's dinner, it's this day it's lunch, dinner and lunch, I guess there's nothing else, just dinner and lunch. The last two things here are, let me hashtag these out, um, hover time, uh, data, and custom data. Actually, let me hashtag this, okay, hover time data. What this allows you to do, values will appear as extra data in the hover tooltip. So, without what this means is that right now when you hover over it, tip is 7.5 and then time is dinner. Time was not there. If I don't, if this was hashtag out, time would not exist there because I don't plot it. But if I want the user to know what time it is when they hover over it, I want the markers hover to present it. Then I just I do that I just I add the hover data parameter I add uh, uh, the list uh, of the column time and now this is as you can see here is added time equals dinner but without that that wouldn't exist the last column or the last parameter that we're going to talk about right now is the custom data and this is going to give us a table size but it's not going to add it to the figure it's just going to add it to the back end. Uh, memory. So now, see, table size is not there. Table size does not appear as a hover. 
but it does appear in the custom data. It's, it's a bit complicated to understand if you're not using Dash or interactive capabilities, but this is going to be very useful when you start using Dash, which is built on Plotly and allows you to create interactive graphs, like with uh, dropdowns or range sliders, and you tell the user to choose a certain day on the dropdown. Um, it's very important to have the capability to, to choose more values. Now, since we table size, we did not graph in any way. It's not on the x-axis, it's not on the y-axis, it's not a color marker, it's not a symbol. It doesn't exist for this figure. But if I add it to the custom data, if I say add table size, that exists. You can't see it, but it's, it's in the memory. So now if you have to access it using a different library or a drop-down, now you can say if the user chose table size whatever, then only those table size markers six or five would appear because you actually have it in there. You said computer or, or plotly, please remember that table size is also a value that I want you to remember and I want it to exist in there. If it's not there, you can't play around with it. If you have any questions, please ask me below the, the YouTube video. I'll be happy to answer. Okay, so in the second part of the video, we're going to go over uh, all the facet rows and faster columns and everything you can do below this. This is actually one of the most important things that you can do in a scatter plot. So please join me for the second part of this video.